letting go. The cold crystalline blanket covers the earth, keeping her seeds warm and protected. High above the massive body, the tree holds the dull brown leaves to herself. Or is it the leaves who clutch onto her barren branches? Hey everybody and welcome back to Poetic Philosophy number 17. And in this episode, uh, I'm going to be talking about Clutter and decluttering with a uh, monologue. A uh, poem of mine is browsing through an old closet. Um, I have a couple sound seeing tours. Um, a poem about minimalism, the light of death, uh, an Icarus poem that I have. Icarus am I. So there's a lot of good stuff here about decluttering and cluttering. So stick around. And here is my decluttering monologue. These are my thoughts into why I decided to declutter my space. I want to live a simpler life where I truly could live in the moment. I think many desire to do this. I continue to look into ways of having less stress and the busyness of life. I think I can still be busy without being stressed by it. I don't need the latest gadget to help me do something. I just need to do that something whether that something is making movies writing or listening to talk shows or music by living simply i'm able to master what it is i want to master i came to the realization about my stuff by asking the question why do i have all this stuff much of this stuff i forgotten i had so i'm not using it and it's just taking up space also when I look for something, it takes me a long time to find it. I get lost in these plastic bins of my stuff and lose my creative momentum. I live in a small space that feels smaller because of all the stuff I have. To fit all my stuff in a space, I would need to get a bigger space, which would cost more money. I want to be in the moment, in my space, to connect to the spirituality of space, not drowned by space. Some part of me knew about decluttering because I've written poems like Letting Go or poems of trying to fly metaphorically while my feet are on the ground as I wrote in my Icarus poems. However, I didn't realize how hard decluttering was before I started to declutter. I would start to throw something out or putting it into the recycle bin and I would stop because I get these emotions, all these thoughts coming into my mind that says you will no longer have these things or you will lose it forever. You see, I grew up poor and not having much, so these thoughts are hard to overcome. But I do keep trying because I know life is magic when we go with our own flow. I declutter all I need to fully use and go after what I really want. We each have the freedom to find what makes us happy. Don't clutter your life with the static that makes it harder to see the bigger picture of your life. Stay creative in the magic of life. Thank you. Browsing through an old closet. Among the dark, jam full with stuff, I must see the light, clear out the clutter. Amongst the cobwebs, all my memories set, daylight is coming, spring cleaning's a must. What I find in corners will give me sustenance, I must bring it to light, to be free, a must. Held as a prisoner amongst the stuff, enter God's light, paves the way. Deep in mind's eye, cluttered emotion set. The love of God frees all the clutter. Decluttering. Decluttering. Why are these emotions kicking my butt? There are no butts in decluttering. It's only stuff. Back and forth I go. Bitter beer with chocolate. It tastes good together. But it stops me. Stops me from simplicity. To live that life we all want. Hands on work, hands on creation, life's meditation. 
but these emotions, I connect to these things. I remember when, memories of the past, memories of success, memories of failure. But it's hard to separate me from that stuff. What if I need that? What if I can't find it again? What if this is the best, the best I can do or get? But what if the best is yet to come? What if simplicity, simplicity is just ahead? I remember that poem, Don't Quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things go wrong that you must not quit. So I will not quit decluttering. I will declutter my space. I will live freely. This is my... This is my goal. This is my life. Simplicity. Thank you. Show me the heart unfettered by foolish dreams, and I'll show you a happy man. But only in their dreams can men be truly free. It was always thus, and always thus will be. Tennyson? No, Kitty. Order within chaos. To spend our lives turning chaos to order, we don't realize there is order within chaos. A patch of ground with pine needles, dead branches, young saplings, mature tree that nourish the soil, that help feed insects, that help feed birds, new growth, new ideas. Old trees, old ideas, the old feeds the new in the cycle of creation. Energy becomes matter, matter becomes energy. Creation is chaos, the old feeds the new. Meditate on the chaos. See the purpose of chaos. See the patterns of chaos in our own lives. <clears throat> hey, everybody. It's uh, April 5th, and I'm walking in the woods, not too far from where I live. I live in Manchester, and we have uh, a lake, and, uh, you know, woods right next to the lake. That kind of acts like a park, I guess. You know, because people can park, get out, walk amongst the trees, walk their dogs, <clears throat> just have uh, family time, friend time, just out in nature. I love that feeling. even though it's still not quite the same as uh, going up to the White Mountains. Seem to be going up there more. Um, but what is it about uh, nature that draws people to it? You know, I think it's just because of the uh, simplicity you know um, where you can be away from technology even though I'm recording this on my smartphone <laughs> and I'm sure other people who walk this have their smartphones with them <laughs> you know it's amazing how uh, how much of uh, small tech has made it into just the everyday stuff. 
but I think people like living out, well, walking amongst nature and just being out here. Just because of the uh, simplicity of nature. I mean, because nature is pretty much simple. You know, the water was created a long time ago. And it runs on certain principles. When the lake needs to be filled up again, we get more rain, we get more snow. And I like how the lake is full again. Last year at this time, uh, well, actually it was, it was full at this time last year, but it was getting low. It's full now, and it's nice to see it full. Not just because this lake is um, where Manchester gets their drinking water. And that's probably why the lake went down. Because people had to stay in their houses. And so they drank more water, they went to the bathroom more. Uh, they couldn't go to the store to buy bottled water. So they used the free water from their tap. And the lake went down. But the trees, the rocks... They just... Uh, they're simple as they are. Once they were created, they didn't need to be recreated. So there's a certain simplicity with nature that I think um, we all crave. And I think that is part of the reason why um, movements like uh, minimalism have uh, begun or have started. And people are moving more towards minimalism not just because of need, because things are getting more and more expensive, because the national debt keeps going up, and thus our money is worth less, so we can buy less with uh, what we used to buy, you know. Just think of those uh, way back when, <laughs> before my time, the 5 and 10 stores. Well, the new five and ten stores are the dollar stores. <clears throat> and even those dollar stores, they're becoming two and five dollar stores for the same stuff that, you know, a century ago you could buy for a dime or a nickel. That's inflation. You know, people say, oh, what does the national debt have to do with us? Well, that's what it has to do. That's how it affects us. But people like, uh, I think people crave this simplicity. You know, um, the busyness. It gets tiring. And we need something else. We need something else to, uh, you know, we got to get back to where we once were. You know, and that is simple. Simplicity. So, <clears throat> there's some people playing with their dogs, walking with their dogs. <clears throat> this, uh, the simpleness of, uh, the simpleness of just being out in the woods. Just taking a walk out in the woods. And all that. Hey, puppy. <laughs> so anyways. Um, wow, didn't realize I talked for seven minutes.
But I think that's why people like like it in the woods. More you know, getting back to the simplicity and away from the daily grind <clears throat> out of necessity. Anyways, that's it for now. Life is a series of cycles. Endings become beginnings. Beginnings become endings. The point of tension between two thoughts is the change of all creation. Internet. We live our lives in little boxes here on Internet. Within these boxes, our hopes, our beliefs, our fears, our dreams manifest from the ether. From some place within, that place of union, we gather together to share our stories, hoping we could make the world better. History will be the judge here on Internet, is our past, our present, our future, here on Internet, our heritage, our tree grows, watered by us, here on Internet, freedom lives or freedom dies, depending on us. Change within and your world changes, power between thoughts, Conversation, mind and emotion, I come to know. That silent voice, my world changes. Power between thoughts, conversation. With the silent voice, my world changes. I come to know myself. Minimalism Minimalism, have what you only need. Less stuff. Poor, make the best of what you have, less stuff. Two different mindsets, one of choice, one of necessity. The light of death. March winds blow across the barren landscape, stripped of all its beauty. The trees bend to the will of the wind. The tall human structures stand silent and lifeless. The stars look down on the bare landscape and winks. The man on the moon smiles down on the reverence of the trees to the wind. The sun warms the human structures to give life to them. The march winds reminds all of the light of death and celebrates the oneness of rebirth. Icarus am I. I want to fly as Icarus did among the eagles and touch the sky. But I can't fly with rocks in my pockets, trapped in my regular routine, struggling to put food on the table. My sustenance is greater than apples, peaches, and ham. Living in the great emptiness, my heart slows its beat. People drive their cars, tend their neat lawns, watch mountains on TV, and shop in air-conditioned stores. I will drive my RV up to the mountains, hike the tallest one, to be with the eagles. Icarus am I. Hey everybody, hope you're liking the show so far. On decluttering. One thing that we need to do is to declutter our brains. See, a lot of people say the eyes are the window to the soul, but the eyes are just physical. Yes. They see great things and they see differently from other eyes. And each of those experiences are unique. But the true gateway to the soul is through the mind. And we clutter that up, we block that with beliefs 
some beliefs we know are wrong that we want to continue to cling to even though we know it's wrong. Pieces of information, you know, as we clutter our spaces with stuff. We clutter our minds with stuff. Pieces of information that doesn't really help us. You know, by keeping our brains uncluttered, by old past beliefs that we either know are false or that we don't know are false. But our, you know, by all the bits of information, they cloud out wisdom. And all wisdom is, is applied knowledge. Information and knowledge are two different things. You know, back in the early century, you know, there was something that called knowledge workers. You know, but they weren't really knowledge workers. They were just information brokers. Passing out information, people sharing the same information, and that information's, even though that information's been proven to be false, people still share it. Because they're the illusion that that's true. That's not true knowledge. True knowledge is more than information. True knowledge is how we live our lives. The decisions we make on a daily basis. How we construct a poem, how we construct a picture, a photograph, a painting, a piece of music. It's how we construct that. It's how we connect to our world. That's knowledge. That's true knowledge. And wisdom is when that knowledge is applied and shared freely through a completed piece of music or a completed poem or a completed story. We clutter ourselves up with too much crap. You know, we need to let go some of these old beliefs and some of these old pieces of information that have been proven wrong even though people continue to spout the same stuff over and over and over again. Just because you repeat something over and over and over does not mean that it's correct and true. It just deepens the illusion that you're in and it clutters the mind by cluttering the brain. Because when the brain is set free and the brain is our physical connection between, see, the mind is our connection to our soul and the brain is our connection to our, our physical environment. And when our brain is uncluttered, by old hurts that have been forgotten, by old beliefs, that are no longer true, 
by pieces of information that mean nothing in our daily life. You know, when, when that clutters our brain, it clutters how our soul can perceive the world we're living in. I'm sitting here by the lake. I'm looking at the bottom of the lake. And I can see the the leaves down there, the little pebbles, the sand, the bigger stones, the little twigs. There's no fish. They're probably out in the, they're probably more out in the middle of the lake. They wouldn't be by the shore. <clears throat> but that's when... When our brains are uncluttered, you know, we're able to connect to our soul on a deeper level. And when our inner reality of soul and our outer reality in the physical that we live in, when those two meet... the true knowledge that we get, the true wisdom. It beats any of that clutter, those old hurts. Forgive them. Forgive those old hurts. They're in the past. Move forward. Move forward. Heal and move forward. Stop remembering those bits, pieces of information that really has no meaning in your life. You know, if you need to remember them, put them on paper. Keep them in a little book. So they're there in case, you know, when you need them, it's there. And just free your brain and let your brain and mind connect. That's the type of peace that I continue to search for. That's why I started decluttering a long, long time ago. Because it helps me to get to union. Helps me to use not just my physical senses, but my deeper inner knowing from soul. So I thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Thank you for listening. Declutter your brain. Declutter your life. Nature is simple in its complexity. Go out in nature and ponder on that idea. Nature is simple in its complexity. And it shows us great things and inspires us in ways. And we can and we can connect not just to nature but each other on a different level. And then maybe we can achieve unity. But that'll be for next week's show. Thank you. Stay creative in the magic of life. Good day. Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for.